I can't believe I played the whole series. Yes, I did. In an effort to find just the right type of material that I can point my finger and laugh at and say, <laughs> poo poo game. I actually went through the soul crushing, mind numbing process of playing every single console release of a game series hardly anyone knows or cares about enough to click on this video. And to the select few poor unfortunate souls who have doomed themselves forever by letting curiosity get the best of them and bestow upon Upon themselves the brain cell disintegrating action of having to sit through the absolute most god-awful unprofessional piece of shit unfunny excuse for a game review show hosted by a guy that sounds like he's married to his sister and pays child support to his inbred children named Lurlina and Earl Bob Welcome. Now, where was I? Once upon a time, long before the internet, TV, or non-registered hypercams, in the year of our Lord Hizzo Christo 1938, a company named Bergen Toy and Novelty designed a line of inexpensive plastic toys that depicted military soldiers. By the 1950s, several companies were making these same generic plastic figures, which came to be known by the also generic nomenclature, Army Man. To begin with, they were only green, until one of the original manufacturers started making different colors colors so the green man would have enemies to fight. German soldiers were gray and Japanese soldiers were yellow. I see what you did there! Look, don't blame me. Blame the toy factory that's probably out of business now and all of the founders are dead. Maybe that'll make you feel better. Now, what do ancient racist toys have to do with a game series? Well, in 1991, Trip Hawkins, the founder of EA before it stood for evil assholes, started the 3DO company where they designed the greatest video game console known to nobody. The 3 Dick oral. Whenever the console flopped like a penis that just saw Prince Philip naked, the 3DO company thought they might do better making their own video games. They didn't. During this time, they started making the Might and Magic series under the name New World Computing. They also made the highly underrated Battle Tanks games, including Battle Tanks Global Assault, which is one of my favorite N64 games of all time. Don't play the PS1 version, it's butchered. The 64 version is what you want. You can do a co-op campaign and four-player deathmatch along with a slew of other multiplayer modes. Get that Project 64 booted up and get a net playroom going. I'm serious, this game is awesome. That will be the only time you'll hear me say awesome in this review. Because the main thing that 3DO made were the Army Men games. And boy, did they make a lot of games. They shat these things out faster than Turbo Turds. You know, Turbo Turds. The series started when 3DO wanted to make a real-time strategy game like Command & Conquer, but they didn't want to deal with censorship issues in countries like Germany that had censored Command & Conquer. So the idea was to change the real soldiers into toy soldiers. If it's toys, it's not violent, right? No, I'm asking, I don't know. The PC got the real-time strategy games, while the consoles got the third-person shooters and aerial combat games. And y'all, these games are painful. Almost as painful as stepping on one of these toy soldiers with a bare foot. You think stepping on a Lego hurts? Wait till you step on Private Dick Johnson. Army Man 3D. Okay, love, let me get y'all set up as far as the story goes for all these games. You are green. They are tan. Your job? Kill the tan man question mark profit because that's how war works you have to kill everybody who's a different color than you I told myself no political jokes. What the fuck? Gameplay footage. Now, the first thing you notice besides the low detail textures and the Silent Hill fog is that there's no music. I don't know what kind of weird gibberish proprietary code 3DO used developing this game, but 99% of the Army Men games won't emulate the music correctly or at all. I tried every emulator, every setting, everything short of deep throating a green plastic army dick, but the music just just won't work. Not that you're missing anything, it's just that generic gung-ho soldier music, you know. I don't know, but I've been told Doug Walker can eat a chode. He eats chode, so we don't have to. You're gonna hear me complain about tank controls a lot in this video because damn near every single Army Men game has tank controls. There's probably a joke in there somewhere about the game being a military game and there's tanks in it, so you have tank controls, but it gives me brain diarrhea even thinking about it. There's also auto-aim and literally no other kind of aim. It's weird. When an enemy is on screen, even a little, it'll auto-aim, but only if you shoot at the very 
precise trajectory that you can only hit when the planets align around the third moon of Mars on a Sunday. And even though the enemies aren't hit scanners, they do auto-aim pretty damn well compared to you, and they can see you from very far away. If they ain't so much as a gnat's fart-sized pixel on the screen, they're already shooting at you. Now you may ask, can I manually aim? You can have the illusion of manually aiming. You can't aim up or down, there's no crosshair, you can only turn left or right tank style. So basically all that's happened is the camera got up close. Did I mention you have unlimited ammo? Because you do. And your rifle is semi-automatic, so there's no reason for you not to spam the fire button continuously. Yeah, that sound won't get annoying at all. Speaking of gun sounds, the menus in this game use really loud, hilarious gun sounds when you highlight something. Driving vehicles in this game is hilarious. There's barely any room to drive them, and they all run like Sonic the Fuckhog is on a conveyor belt acting as an engine. For real, they drive and turn so fast you can't hardly control them. Look at the tank. Have you ever seen a tank this fast? I, I, I don't even have a joke for this. It makes fun of itself just fine, tank you. <laughs> Army. And you know what? The game only gets worse from there, I'm afraid. Look here, I'm letting auto-aim do its job, but my bullets don't reach far enough. And right here, the enemy is not even on screen, and it's auto-aiming at it. What a janky piece of crap. How about that completely blank purple sky? Like Barney the Dinosaur's dick taking up the whole skybox. Enemies don't respawn in the game, so if you've missed a mission objective and have to go back to do something and you killed everybody, the game gets real like desolate and creepy, especially since the music don't work. All you hear is your feet on the ground and the loud, obnoxious noise of your CPU fan. For fuck's sake, listen to it! This game is also under the impression that it's fun to walk extremely slowly through a minefield and try to find all the mines in it, sometimes while the bad guys are shooting at you. You know what's more fun and gives the same effect? Getting rid of your cat's litter box, feeding him a whole bag of treats, and the next morning walking into your living room blindfolded. Okay, that's all of that game I can take. But you'll be surprised to know, by reviewing that game, I have actually reviewed five games at once. Apparently, 3DO recycled this engine and made four additional games under the banner Army Men World War. There was the original, Air, Sea, and Land, Final Front and Team Assault. And unless I told you outright that I just showed you four different games, you would have thought this footage was all the same game. They're easily the worst ones of the PS1 era. I can't even really expand on what I said earlier even. They're the same as Army Men 3D, but worse, even more rushed out to make the quick buck, and the problems the original had are amplified times 10. Oh yeah, they're extremely hard too. There, that's five Army Men games reviewed. All shitty, rushed, recycled pieces of crap. You know what? They're kinda like the toys. Quick and cheap to make, extremely rough around the edges, all manufactured from the same mold. Huh, in that case, they closely capture the spirit of the toys. But now, we get to the more interesting games. There's a line of Army Men games that actually have a story, a cast of characters, and exist in their own little universe. For the video's sake, we'll call it at the Sarge universe, because it all starts with the most well-known game in the series. Hell, you may have even heard of it. Sarge's Heroes. Man, 3DO used to advertise the hell out of this game. It was pretty clear this was the one they sunk all the time and effort into, like it was going to be the next big thing and Sarge was going to be a mascot. At the same time, they also released Air Attack, which also featured the Sarge's Heroes characters. In fact, this game came with a demo of it. You know what else this game came with? Jim Cummings! I do so love the smell of burnt plastic in the morning. Yes, sir, I'm on my way! Bravo Company, incoming! Move out, move out! I took a bullet crossing the bridge and Bravo Company got separated during the attack. They can hold their own. Now let's get you to the landing pad. A lot of Jim Cummings. He voices literally every male character in the game. I'm not gonna lie, some of these cutscenes are actually kind of funny. It's suicide. Colonel, suicide is my middle name. Well, actually, it was my brother's middle name. The one who died. 
okay, he doesn't say fuck. What do you expect? I used to make YouTube poops. So from the looks of it, this game uses the same engine once again as Army Men 3D, only this time with some slightly cartoonier graphics and the auto aim actually tells you when it's working or not. And look, first person shooting mode. I used this zero times. I am a literal sack of shit. I asked for something, get it and don't use it. And once again, we've got those oh so wonderful tank controls to play with. But like I said, all these games had tank controls. My dick has tank controls. The only games that didn't have it were games that weren't meant to have it. Like those real time strategy army men games on the PC. Those are on Steam, by the way. One thing the Sarge universe added to army men is what's called the big world, a different dimension where you're the size of a toy inside or outside a house. I can't imagine someone's reaction to seeing a bunch of toy soldiers all blowing each other up in their yard, but there's probably a Toy Story joke in there somewhere. Also, listen to the music on this level. I wonder what that's supposed to be. Well, I got news for you. I had the Nintendo 64 version when I was a kid and the music sounded like this. It kind of makes sense because the game has got me so I don't know what I'm doing. Yeehaw! You call that a yeehaw, Jim Cummins? Let a man show you. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. Plastro. Yes, little man. Colonel Grimm and the Sarge have escaped our forces and have captured a blue intelligence officer and... Well, to make matters worse, Sarge found one of our poor... What?! Colonel Grimm and Sarge have escaped... I heard you. It was a rhetorical what?! Does anyone else have any good news they'd like to share? No, no sir. Not me. Nothing. These cutscenes are great. They should have just made an Army Men TV show. I would have watched that. Too bad instead we got a bunch of mediocre third-person shooters. Although this one might be the least crappy of the bunch. There was effort put into this one. The reason I say that is when I'm running and gunning, mowing down bad guys and blowing up tanks, I'm actually having a good time. It's when the game starts to show its janky side, when I start to groan like a bitch and suddenly all the fun is sucked out of it. For example, there are no checkpoints in the game or in the majority of these games. When you die, you start all over again. Second, using a grenade is aggravating as hell because you go into this grenade mode and a cursor goes back and forth showing you where it will land and there's like a bit of input lag on the throw plus a slow animation for doing so it's not even really worth it to use it it's like cops they serve a purpose but it ain't worth using them and the minefields i already talked about them i don't know why they think this is fun you know those kids those little bitty kids you'll see them laughing and they're just laughing their ass off about something you don't know what they're laughing about and there's nothing there that would be funny and you ask them what they're laughing at and they won't tell you I don't know why I brought that up. That's just something that bothers me. Well, here I am stuck on this level. Don't know where to go. Maybe I need to walk across this puddle of water. Sarge is allergic to water like I am to bullshit. Noted. As you progress through the game, you find the heroes of Sarge's heroes, and all of them are Jim Cummings. I slipped away when the tan guards were wrestling with Thick. Those goons forced him through some weird energy field back at the camp. It was awful. You should have- Energy field? A portal? You gotta take me to it! But, 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 no, no, but that's, that's on the other side of the minefield! That's what I'm Where's telling you! Where's your spine, can't... soldier? Be all you can be! But, You're a minesweeper! Start a... sweeping! I don't want to sweep anymore! No! Okay, I guess it will. I'm telling you, everyone is Jim Cummings. Guys, what if Nolan North was Jim Cummings this whole time? What if you're Jim Cummings? What if I am? What if I couldn't afford the $200 it costs to hire Jim Cummings on Cameo? I wasn't too sure if maybe you had a forgotten about me. Okay, Ralph from Animaniacs. So now the character travels with you, and they're not very helpful either, even though they have a gun. Wait, what? What? Back that shit up just a second. He died from continuously touching an ant over and over. You know, that's how my uncle died. Wait a minute, what's this music? Is that what I think it is? Out here in the weeds, I stirred all the soldiers. I just got some straps to hold my shoulder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Buy 
my album, damn it. Well, now that my throat hurts, let's do Sarge's Heroes 2. But before that, you know how I mentioned the N64 version of Sarge's Heroes? Well, guess what? It's worse. It's exactly what you think. There's no cutscenes, but you also have absolutely no control over the camera. The camera decides where it wants to go. So trying to get it turned around so you can see what's in front of you is nigh impossible. This game is literally unplayable on the N64. Anyway, Sarge's Heroes 2. Remember how I said the music doesn't work quite right in some of these 3DO games? Well, it does this. I, I don't even know how to describe that. It sounds like somebody playing a song on a keyboard and trying to hurry the fuck up about it. You can tell it's almost a song, but there's a lot of wrong notes being hit. I have never seen this before in my life. That's pretty up there in the weirdest audio glitches I've ever seen. Now, Sarge's Heroes 2 actually had a release on the PS1 and the PS2. And guys, the PS2 game is freaking impossible. I couldn't get past the second fucking level for nothing. I wanted to play a good bit of it because I'm sure it's the superior port, but hot damn, it's extremely difficult. You die on only like a few hits. So you know, what we're gonna have to play the ps1 version because like the guy paralyzed from the neck down i can't beat it and boy i'm somewhat glad i did play the ps1 version look at this ouch they really phoned this shit in this is the exact same spot you saw me at in the ps2 version i've heard of brown games but this one's orange Sarge. What? Help me. You don't need any help. Ain't nobody shooting at you. What the fuck? Maybe you have to kill every guy in the level. Here, I'll kill this guy. Sarge. What, is there another one? You mean this one guy who's way the fuck over here not hurting anything? Oh, oh yeah. Go, ho, ho, fuck yourself. Oh, ho, ho, yeah. You already said that. Go munch on a green dick. I've heard green dick is better than blue dick. Oh, shit, motherfucker. Okay, that's funny. Hey, what happened to Private Johnson? And he put him on ice. You see that text that keeps popping up? Apparently that was their way of getting around the fact that there was so little space on a PS1 disc. On the PS2, this is actually voice clips. Or maybe they were just lazy, I don't know. Are you seeing what I'm seeing right now? An automatic crossbow that loads itself. Infinite, I must add. Damage, what does that do? Holy shit, now it's a spread gun. Hey, if guns ever get banned, I'm buying one of these. Now let's try the flamethrower. Let's not do the flamethrower. Seriously though, what the fuck? Why is it so loud? I have to turn it down so much so you can hear me over it. It sounds like it's one short sound effect playing a million times or something like that. There's more corruption in this game than Randy Pitchford and Todd Howard fucking on top of Duke Nukem's corpse while the Vault Guy fingers Randy's bumhole. There's not really much more to say about this one. It's just a jankier Sarge's Heroes, but they did add big robot toys as an enemy. In fact, they're a major plot device in the story. And again, the cutscenes are pretty fun to watch. I suggest y'all look them up on YouTube. Oh, hey, Battle Tanks reference. You know, this is getting to become a habit. Maybe if I just left you in there, you'd stay out of trouble. What do you think? You can't me in here. Plasher wants to marry me. Still? I figured after a couple hours of your nagging, he'd- Just get me out of- gotta stop meeting like this. The story in this one is kinda neat. A spy takes the bad guy from the first game to a toy store in the real world where he starts a new army. Have you ever seen Small Soldiers? This is that. There's a whole scene that involves a pinball machine that's a really fun watch. And then there's the final level where you're supposedly inside the pinball machine or as close as they could get with a PS1 in limited time frame. Oh yeah, I didn't mention the strict time limit the development of these games were under. Trip Hawkins put forth a strict six to nine month production timetable on all 3DO games, which means each game had to be finished in less than a year. And this is a company that churned out multiple games a year. Crunch is good, guys. Also, apparently, 
apparently Drippy Trippy is a bit of an ass. GamePro Magazine did a review of a 3DO game called Portal Runner, which is an Army Men spinoff game, released on September 11th of 2001, I shit you not. The reviewer hated the game and gave it a 2.3 out of 5. When Trippy Boy found out about this, he sent out a fucking furious email to John Rousseau, the president of GamePro, and threatened to pull all their advertising from their magazine. In retaliation, John Rousseau posted the email online for everyone to see. Y'all need to hear this. The audience for games no longer consists of one iconic block of angry young men who cannot get a date on a Saturday night. We wanted to include boys, girls, women, and casual gaming men. Tag yourself, I'm casual gaming man. Meanwhile, I personally think that we made a game that hardcore adult male gamers would enjoy, but I can understand that some of them would reject it the same way some adults reject Shrek or Beethoven. Wow, we got a Shrek shout out. But personally, I think that really means there is something wrong with a man like that, not with Portal Runner. The man literally just said, if you don't like my game, there's something wrong with you. Damn, we got some big brass balls on this son bitch. And do not patronize me by telling me the reader is the customer. Your real customer is the one that pays your revenue. And it is the game industry advertisers. So you saying we're obligated to give you good reviews because the magazines are for you, not the readers? I would laugh at that if I hadn't heard that a million times before from different game companies. Do y'all remember when MGS4 came out and reviewers criticized the length of the cutscenes and the file size of the installation and Konami got fucking butthurt about it? They said similar shit about that. We're paying you to give us good reviews. Shut your mouth. Also, with that said, I guess I'm gonna have to review Portal Runner one day and see if it's as bad as they said or if it's truly Trip's gift to man. It's gonna suck, isn't it? Now that that big long rant is out of the way, I've got another Army Man game to show y'all. Did you know that they actually tried to make a Shadow the Hedgehog type edgy Army Men character in the Sarge universe? Yes, they fucking did. Here he is. Green Rogue. Look at him. Oh God, he's so edgy. He's got a big gun. He's got glowy eyes, boys. He's gonna say the F word to your teacher and blow up homework. Yeah, fuck you, dad. Green Rogue said I'm not gonna do my homework. Oh God, this main menu. <laughs> well, I was not expecting this. It's an arcade style shooter with a linear path. Like if Crash Bandicoot 1 was a third person shooter. Well, this one does not have tank controls, but it has something way worse. Every time you turn, Green Rogue glitches out and has a mini seizure for a second and then turns where he's supposed to go. And what is this frame rate? Good lord! It can't decide if it wants to be 15 or 30. Quite like my sense of humor. Oh my god, the bullets are little Atari pixels. And they change color! That's so adorable! Again, we have infinite ammo, and man, hearing this gun shoot for hours and and hours does things to your head like put bullets through it oh shit it's the line at the dmv okay hold up guys i'm gonna get to you i'm gonna get to you hold up hold up here we go now nah, we're gonna kill you what's funny is even though you're supposed to run from point a to point b and shoot bad guys in between there's nothing stopping you from just running right past them they'll shoot you in the back but whatever you're a plastic killing machine what's a few bullets in the back these levels are long too and there's a bunch of them and you don't really know when you've gotten to the end until the game suddenly stops scrolling. Then you just kill whatever enemies on screen and that's it. Oh yeah, throwing grenades still sucks ass. They have no blast radius in this game at all. When you pick up a gun you already own, you get an upgrade for it, sometimes turning it into a spread gun or a more powerful version of what it was before. The flamethrower changes fire color and the green one looks like a nuclear fart cloud. Oh god, is it too close? Camera, ca camera please, I can't see. Turn that zoom back, man, shit. Oh shit, I just got a bazooka. And it's got infinite ammo. This ain't a cheat, I swear. It actually has infinite ammo. Well, hell, the game's over now. I have an infinite bazooka. It's over. This game is done. Man, I wonder what that looks like when it's upgraded. What? <laughs> <laughs> Infinite Bazooka Spread Gun? Are you shitting me right now? Infinite Bazooka Spread Gun. Oh my god. I wonder how this will do on the boss battles.
Oh, look, it's my comment section. And you know what, guys? I think that's about all the army men I can take right now. There are still several more games I have to go through. Enough to make a whole other video, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. At the middle of the month, you're gonna get a part two. When we come back, we're gonna check out the aerial combat games, the handheld monstrosities of the GBA, the last Sarge game, and whatever happened to the series after 3DO. Spoiler, it gets worse.